Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So we've got this new Lightning MTS uh, we've had in the shop for a better part of a month. Just going through some of the different uh, functions and capabilities of it. It has stick, MIG, TIG, uh, you can do AC TIG aluminum on here, high frequency, lift arc, uh, pretty much a little bit of everything. Uh, so it's, it's very capable, very versatile machine. Uh, so today we're just going to go through some of the TIG functions, AC, DC mainly. We're going to test out the low end capabilities, uh, messing around with some of the pulse. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is test out low end capability. So we're gonna, I got some razor blades set up. We'll go ahead and set this to about 40 amps here. Starting amps at 10. Use the foot pedal, high frequency, and about six seconds of post flow. Uh, the user interface is pretty intuitive. Uh, I like the fact that it has everything all in one area. So everything's listed right there. pre -flow, post flow. So if I need to make an adjustment, I can just cycle through and adjust that one. You don't have a bunch of knobs to deal with and hidden menus to go through. Okay, so I'm using a 1 16th tungsten, 1 16th 70S6 filler because these are carbon box cutting blades. I'm gonna go ahead and light up on this copper block right outside the, uh, the entryway to the, the two blades. I'm just gonna use a lay wire technique, try to put more of the heat into the wire than actually on the blades. The blades are gonna get all that residual heat and it'll fuse together and, and melt in and tie in real good. All right, so we had a good arc initiation, good taper out, so we didn't blow out any of the edges. Overall, I'd say it performed pretty decent. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and do some outside corner joints on some 16 gauge stainless, and we're gonna go through a couple different pulse frequencies. All right, so we'll go ahead, we're gonna set it to 70 amps. You probably won't need all 70 amps, but I've got it at my disposal if I need it. Go over to the pulse settings. Now it's capable of doing uh, half a hertz all the way up to 150 hertz or 150 pulses a second. I'm gonna go ahead and do a one second pulse. We'll start off with that. My pulse time on, that's how, how, how long the, uh, the duration, the time, uh, at my peak amperage. I'm going to set that to about two-thirds, so roughly about 66 percent. And then my base amps, what's this thing going to, uh, what's the low end of this going to be when it's not pulsing, when it kind of retracts? Uh, I'll set that to about a third, about 33. All right, so good arc initiation, did really good on the, uh, the thinner material. Um, I probably, personally, I wouldn't run one pulse a second on material this thin, something a little bit thicker if we get into like eighth or three sixteenths. No problem, but uh, I'd kind of like to run a little bit faster on this thin gauge material. Uh, but overall, it did pretty good. We're going to go ahead and bump it up to 75 hertz, or 75 pulses a second, and see what that does for us in the middle. All right, everything else is going to stay the same. The only thing we're going to change is our pulse frequency. The cool thing is if I push this dial in, I can go ahead, I can, I can make big adjustments really quick in, in tens, right? So I'm just going to run about 75 pulses uh, per second. It's capable of 150, so this is about the halfway point. Uh, go back home and we're ready to go. All right, 75 uh, pulses per second, ran pretty good. We're gonna go ahead, bump it up to 150, which is the max this machine will do. Uh, that'd be a good application, like, you know, if you want like thinner materials, getting uh, overhead or out of position, uh, it'd do pretty well on there just because, you know, give it a little bit more uh, puddle stability. So we'll go ahead, crank it up to 150 and see how she does. All right, so one thing I like about this, like I said before, everything is intuitive. Everything's right here. You know, I wanna go in and adjust the pulse. I just cycle over till I hit pulse. It tells me it's already on. I'm gonna go in here and change this to 150. And then I can back right back out of it. Everything's just displayed, you know? So if I need to make a quick adjustment, you know, I can just bounce over to where I need to go, change my post flow. I like not having to go through sub menus and, and uh, you know, different hidden menus to try and find, you know, where, what, what my settings are at. All your basics are right here. So I like that. All right, 150 Hertz, uh, did pretty decent. Uh, you can see the heat signature is much smaller as we go up in, in Hertz. Uh, it was larger with the one pulse per second. Remember, we're running the same, same amount of amperage on all these, same amount of background current. Uh, the only thing we're changing is the pulse. Uh, you'll also notice I've got a little bit of sugaring on that one pulse per second. That's because I had a slower travel speed. Anytime I decrease my travel speed, I'm gonna increase my heat input, right? So heat signature smaller on the, uh, the 75 amps, or I'm sorry, 75 pulses per second, and even smaller on the 150 pulses per second. That's because it's allowing that puddle to cool. I mean, we can't see it, but I mean, that's what it's doing. It's cooling down slightly in between those peaks. Um, so that concludes the pulse functions of it. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to AC. Back over the machine, we're gonna go ahead and switch this over to TIG aluminum. And the only thing we have to do is switch our workpiece clamp because we're no longer on DC positive. We're gonna switch to AC because I need both sides of that DC. I need DC positive, DC negative. Very similar interface, pretty much the same thing except for when I go into AC over here, I can start changing my balance waveform. This is really cool. 
I can go in here, I've got square wave, I've got a sine wave, and I've got triangle wave. Now because I'm going to do some 16 gauge aluminum, I'm going to go ahead to run to a triangle wave because that's better on uh, thinner materials because it crosses back and forth from negative to positive a lot faster. Uh, so it's really good for thinner materials. Balance, I'm going to leave that at 30. This is a uh, percent on cleaning. A little bit different. Some machines, uh, different manufacturers have a different way to do it. This one is 30% uh, on cleaning. My frequency. So most machines, like if you have a transformer rectifier, they don't, they're, they're 60 hertz. That's it. You really can't change much. But with the new inverters, you can change this one from 60 all the way up to 200. So what we're going to do is we're going to run one. We'll do a, a small pass on 60 hertz. Show you the difference on that. And then we'll run it up, uh, I don't know, 120. Uh, that's usually where I like to go. And then we'll, we'll crank it all the way up to the max. Now what frequency is going to do is it's going to allow me to take that arc and tighten it up really tight, which would be ideal for an outside corner joint like this because I don't want a really wide puddle, right? I want something really narrow. So we'll go ahead, we'll test it out on 60, uh, and then we'll show you some of the other capabilities, change in frequency and what that's gonna do to our puddle. All right, so that's 60 hertz. So 60 hertz is basically how many times it's swapping back from negative to positive per second. So at 60 hertz, we're swapping back and forth between negative to positive 60 times a second. When we go up to 120, we're doing the same thing, but it's 120 times a second, okay? Uh, we're going to go ahead and jack this up to 120 and you'll be able to see it. You'll be able to hear it too. Again, real easy to find out where we're going. We're just going to run over here to AC. Change the frequency up to 120. Hit the home button. I'm ready to go. Alright, so that's 120 hertz. As you can see, I picked up a little bit of travel speed. We'll crank it up to 200 and I'll be able to show you this, this final edge here. All right, so we got our uh, weld samples here, 60 hertz, 120, and 200. So with the 60, you can see, all, I mean, all three beads, pretty much decent welds. Um, but the 60, a little bit wider than the other two. Uh, we get into the 120 hertz. Not much difference between the 120 and 200, although with the 200, I did notice I was able to get obtain a faster travel speed. Um, so that, that's kind of nice about it. But other than that, I mean, it's all user preference. You know, it's, if you need 200 hertz, you got it if it's there. Uh, in addition to this, all the pulse settings that we ran through on DC, those are also available on AC, so you still have that full spectrum, uh, being able to adjust your background, uh, time on, and the amount of frequency for your, your pulse as well. Uh, we also messed around with uh, some aluminum cans, so you can get pretty thin with this stuff. Cameraman will show that. Uh, stay tuned because we're going to be doing some uh, stick and MIG on this as well, as well as flux core. But uh, that pretty much concludes the tutorial for this episode. So guys, appreciate you watching. Until next time, make every well better than your last.